processes and tools dominate today's Agile discussions, but we are devoted to the individuals and interactions that make it work. From the beginner to the veteran practitioner, we have something for you. Welcome to Agile for Humans. All right, welcome to this week's episode of Agile for Humans. I'm your host, Ryan Ripley. Joining me tonight, a uh, longtime co-host and friend of the show, Amitai Schleier. Amitai, how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm doing great. Amitai is coming to us from Germany. He's an international traveler this month. That's right, yes. <laughs> also joining us, uh, Faye, Faye Thompson, my... Uh, Partnering crime for many of these last few conferences and an upcoming co-keynote. Uh, dear friend and valued Agile mentor, Faye, how are you? I am doing well this evening. How are you? Great. Also joining us on this panel tonight, uh, someone that I think a lot of people in the Agile community are going to be excited to hear from and hopefully get some updates from. Uh, he is still Marcus. Uh, Marcus Zapala. Marcus, how are you, sir? I am very well, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah, but it's exciting. Glad to be here. It's we are glad you're here too, Marcus, and uh, hopefully we can get a quick update from you. I, I think, like I said, a lot of the agile community would like to hear how you're doing. Um, but just a fun panel tonight. I'm a Ty Fay and Marcus, uh, three of my my dear friends and uh, co-conspirators in this thing we call agile. And uh, I think we're going to talk a little bit about Agile 2017. Catch up with Amitai, Marcus, and Fay, and hopefully just have a nice little conversation. Sound good? Yep. Yep. So, Marcus, um, I'm going to let you decide the level of sharing and discussion, but uh, you scared the hell out of us, my friend. And uh, I know you didn't do it intentionally, but you had a lot of people worried. And uh, I think a lot of people would love to hear your latest update. I would be happy to. Um, <clears throat> for, the, for the majority of people out there that weren't paying attention, um, I came down with a diagnosis of leukemia back in January of this year. And I'm happy to say that I am still in full remission, have been since April. And uh, just this week, I began my third and final round of consolidation and chemotherapy. All signs point to a total cure. And I am <clears throat> very, very e eagerly awaiting the point when my energy level returns to normal so that I can you know, work full work weeks again. Yeah, it's just, it's great to hear that. It was also interesting to follow uh, a lot of your updates. So through the whole process of um, first the diagnosis and then the uh, the steps to remediation and now remission, uh, you blogged quite a bit, you posted it on Facebook quite a bit. And it was interesting how, and we'll get links to all of that in the show notes, because I think the listeners will find it interesting how you actually leaned on uh, your agile training and your agile practice to get through this this incredibly scary and and complex uh, situation yes i didn't realize it in the moment but um i i think a couple days a couple days after diagnosis when people were asking me well how are you sort of handling handling this so well and um my my thought was well maybe i'm just in denial but I think I'm actually exercising, um, you know, being, being in the face of um, uncertainty. The diagnosis came in in stages. It was first, it was, whoa, something's, something's up. I, mean, I, I won't get into all the details here, but, but it, was a, it was a journey of a few days between finding out I was headed to the ER and finding out that I had leukemia and uh, finding out what subtype I had so that they could start treating it. <clears throat> and um, after the fact, I realized that I was sort of hearing my own voice when I have um, coached or um, counseled managers or other software people about, you know, focus only on the problems that you know you have, um, <clears throat> dealing with uncertainty by, by focusing on what we know and, and just kind of letting ourselves get ready for what might come. Um, I, I actually credit my time in the agile space with how I was able to do that, um, <clears throat> even in the face of a potential life-threatening situation. And that was, that was kind of a neat, kind of a, you know, you've internalized the agile mindset when kind of a moment. <laughs> right. Well, it was interesting to follow. And again, just really thrilled that, uh, that you got through this and, 
and and with a great uh, prognosis. And so uh, happy to have you on the show. Happy to have you, uh, sh- you know, out in Orlando at Agile 2017. Um, you know, at Agile Coach Camp, you've been able to to make it to some of these events. So it's just been great being able to see you and catch up. And I'm really glad you're here, Marcus. Thank you. Me too. Amitai, you have some updates. I think the last time you were on the show, I w- I'm not sure if uh, if Tavi was in this world or not. I also don't recall. There's a lot of things right now that I do not recall precisely. Yeah, for the it's listeners, kind of the specialization of the new parent. Exactly for the listeners who don't know, Amitai doesn't sleep anymore. <laughs> um, I do, just not super well, uh, and there's a good <laughs> chance because it's about 3.30 in the morning here in Germany, uh, and surprisingly, Tavi has not woken up yet. There's a good chance, any minute, a very good chance, that I will drop and go change a diaper, because he hasn't learned how to do it himself yet. So I got to do it. <laughs> but you hope one day he will. <laughs> yeah, it's a step on, you know, change your own diaper, and then maybe you don't need one. But I figure you got to learn to change your own diaper first. That's what everybody does, right? Well, uh, congratulations again to you, Amitai, and your wife, uh, on the arrival of Tavi. It's... Uh... I think again the the podcast listeners I think were curious about how that was going and it's uh, it's just great to hear that that everything's going well and uh, he's adorable and healthy and uh, just glad that uh, you and Becky are adjusting and and uh, flourishing as parents. We're having a wonderful time, thank you, and I would be happy to share a link to the photos we've been publishing in the show notes as well. We will if get people those. Want to look at a cute kid? <laughs> we'll have that. Uh, it's a it's a great way to to fix a lousy day and so cute kids uh typically help so we'll get some some links to to the to the pictures as well Faye, uh what have you been up to i know you and i are getting ready to head out on a big trip but uh you know what's going on with you what's going on with me yeah just coming back from agile 2017 where i was um primarily a spectator and trying to process some of the stuff i heard there which was all good um, and yeah, I'm getting ready to head out to Agile Africa, which I'm very um, excited about and not at all trepidatious. <laughs> well, you're better than me then because I am. Um, trepidation is, has entered my mind and my, my behaviors lately. But yeah, that's right. Faye and I are heading out to Agile Africa here. So by the time this episode goes live, we will have been through day. We have, it will be the end of day one at Agile Africa. Uh, Faye and I will be prepping for day two where we are both co-keynoting. Uh, day two at Agile Africa, and then uh, presenting. Uh, I'm doing the No Estimates movement. And Faye, which of your wonderful talks are you presenting? Yeah, I'm going to be talking about how neuroscience helps us build stronger teams. They're just what we know about how we learn and how we interact, and maybe some, um, I guess, tips or tidbits on how we can go back and uh, help our teams interact a little bit better. Oh, it sounds awesome. So I think uh, this is going to be a fun trip for us to reflect on on, on a future episode. Uh, but for yeah. now, I think the big topic from this past week is Agile 2017. Indeed. So Marcus, you know, you were definitely around and, and at quite a few of the sessions. What really stood out to you at Agile 2017? I know there were some new things that they were doing. I, I'll, pr- I'll perhaps comment on some of those that some really great additions to the conference. What really stood out? You know, were there any sessions that really... I got your attention or just anything new that you learned? I guess thinking back, I, I unintentionally wound up with a couple of themes. One was mob programming and hunter industries. Between lunchtime conversations and a couple of different sessions, I, I connected with the, the folks over at Hunter, uh, Chris Lucian, uh, Jason Kearney, and a couple others, and just sort of absorbed a lot of their what's changed since they invented and adopted mob programming a few years ago and how it spread throughout the organization. Um, that was some pretty cool stuff as well as how they've, how they've innovated on, on, uh, employee goal setting practices as well by leveraging techniques from, uh, agile retrospectives. <clears throat> and then the other one was, um, a couple sessions I was in were around, um, what's inclusion and diversity. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, the first, the very first slot I was in a workshop um, <clears throat> given by Ash Coleman, which was very eye-opening and informative. Um, I think the title was something along the lines of what we aren't saying or what, what people aren't saying. Um, and what I learned there was when I've been putting together job descriptions 
for um, trying to hire people in, in places. I am pretty sure, you know, I have, I have deliberately worded things to try to attract people who have the right mindset and or skill set and sort of are already sort of on the agile boat, so to speak. But I have almost definitely excluded whole swaths of the population that I did not want to or intend to exclude. And that kind of threw me into a, 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 I guess, a deep thinking place and, and got a lot, of, a lot of figuring out to do to, to try to balance those things. Yeah, I believe one of the takeaways I saw come across on, on that talk was, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that when we, when we perhaps put a requirement on a, on a job description like a contributor to GitHub, uh, what that means is that since there's, since there's only 3% of the population on GitHub, I believe, are women, what we're basically saying is we're excluding women from our hiring practices, even though that wasn't our intent. And right. I found that the, these ideas to just be, be fascinating. The consequences of the requirements that we set uh, on jobs can just be uh, incredibly limiting without even really realizing it. Yeah, yeah. A couple, couple of specific points that I, that I learned there. Um, <clears throat> one was that women are far less likely to even apply for jobs if they have more than just one or two uh, requirement bullets that they don't think are a perfect match, whereas men will tend to just plow right on through. And, um, <clears throat> and the reality, in my experience, is you, people will list requirements kind of the ideal candidate would have all of these, but really they're not requirements. They're, they're hey, these would be good. And once, once they get you in the door for an interview, then that's where the rubber really meets the road. And a whole lot of people just don't even get that far. Right. If, if, if there's a huge list of, of requirement bullets. Um, other things we, as part of the workshop, we broke up into our tables and, and wrote quick uh, job descriptions for fictional roles at a fictional company. And we shared them back and sort of figured out, okay, so who, based on how we worded things, who is that looking for and who is that not looking for? And um, my group was really surprised to realize that we had given a lot of people the impression that we were only looking for young, single people that are going to put in crazy hours, which was not our intent. But the, the way we worded it came across that way to a lot of people. Yeah, that's a talk that uh, I think opened a lot of eyes and, and really surprised people. It got a lot of activity on Twitter, and it was there's really a lot of talk around it uh, right after. So, really, thanks for for sharing that one, Marcus. Faye, what stood out to you? You know, which uh, sessions did you sit in, and what really what really resonated? I think the thing I came away with the, enjoying the most was the audacious salon, which was a, a new addition last year that Agile Alliance added to the schedule. And uh, it's really intended to be a space for those deeper talks or um, not really about tools and techniques or kind of nuts and bolts, but just, uh, I guess, deeper philosophical discussions about Agile and sometimes the thornier discussions. And a couple of the sessions I went to were just that, like deep dives into the awkward things that we don't want to talk about. And I probably left there, you know, um, with the most food for thought from those sessions. Um, and actually one of the best sessions I attended was the um, Audacious Salon, Agile, no complaints. Let's talk only about the good stuff. And it was um, a fishbowl session in which individuals got up and shared at least, you know, some one positive thing that's happened um, as a result of the Agile mindset for them, whether it's in their personal life or their professional life. And it was really so just heartwarming and profound to be in that room with all of those people and hear about their, how their lives have been changed. And in fact, we enjoyed it so much. I was in that session. I know Marcus, you were in there and uh, Joe Astolfi from here in central Ohio was in there with me and we just love the format so much. We've brought it back and we're going to do it at our own uh, co-op meeting this month. Um, just have invite people to share their positive experiences. So yeah, I've been mulling on that one for a while. I think the other thing I took away too was uh, somebody mentioned kind of, I think in sort of an offhanded way about they had overheard someone say that the Agile Alliance conference had become too much about the touchy feely things and not enough about the nuts and bolts of how to do Agile. 
And I just thought that was really interesting and slightly human because, or slightly humorous because, first of all, the whole humans and individuals and interaction thing is the very first thing that's listed in the whole, uh, in the Agile values. And then I don't know about everybody else, but for me, that is the hardest part the whole part where you inject human beings into this whole paradigm. So, I, in my mind, we need more of those sessions than anything else. So that's kind of what I've been mulling over since then. Yeah, I, I agree. The Audacious Salons were such a wonderful addition. Um, I think George Dinwiddie did a great job with his uh, with his one on, on, on positive things about Agile. Uh, Derek Wade and Paul Boos had their, their Brambles uh, session as one of the Audacious Salons where you talked about uh, one of the, the scenarios was certifications, you know, for or against, and trying to have a conversation in a civil way about know, certifications or scaling Agile or, or things like that. They picked intentionally provocative topics and, and had teams work through them uh, in groups without, uh, without some of the, the conflict that you might see on, on social media. And it was really a fascinating experience trying to work through some of these. And, it, and what's just interesting is you, a lot of us have such very strong emotional uh, and, and just strong opinions about these things. And to be able to work through them was a lot of fun. Um, you know, in another, yeah. go ahead. I appreciate everyone's play acting abilities in that session. I think everyone committed to their parts very well. Yeah. And, and at the end, it, what was interesting was we found ways to agree. So a lot of people like the certification discussion, for example, it's been a topic on the show. It's something that our good friend, Tim Ottinger has been uh, posting about lately. I'll get a link to the show about his latest on, um, his views on certifications, uh, but by the end, even people who are adamantly against were finding ways to agree that perhaps there could be some value just in the learnings, like the journey of getting a certification and the fact that someone took an initiative and the fact that uh, there was a learning process that they intentionally went through and that it wasn't about the cert, it was about gaining knowledge and continuous learning and, and just the, the ability to find common ground on some of these very uh, touchy topics. It was It was really heartwarming to see that too. So I think Paul and Derek did a great job pulling that forward. Um, another thing that, you know, I think Trisha Broderick did a great job with the conference this year and always grateful to her and her organizational team for, you know, this is a massive undertaking. I think most of you know, we're doing the agile coaching summit in Chicago. Uh, Ben Copel and I are putting that together in September. And quite honestly, this is a, uh, there's a maximum of 75 tickets we've made available. It's a much smaller endeavor and it was a ton of, it's still a ton of work. And then when I think about what Trisha and her team, what they do to get 2,500, 3,000 Agilists uh, in Orlando with 19 different tracks and a few hundred talks and speakers, and you know, it's, it's just a monumental effort and really always appreciative of the work that she and her team does. But what they did different this year that I thought was wonderful, and I think you know, Brian Button and a few others had a, a big role in this as well, along with the, the Agile Alliance Board, was their focus on the code of conduct. And they really yes. made that front and center, and they made it clear that this uh, this was important, uh, that it would be upheld, and that it would be uh, taken seriously at all times. And I thought that that was just a great step forward uh, for the conference, and I think it created an additional sense of safety that, that I think was just uh, something that I think they felt was important, and they really showed that through action. So other than that, um, I'm trying to think through the sessions that I attended. Uh, Woody Zool came up with another talk and uh, I wasn't, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always a fan of what Woody has to say. It's great to, to get a peek into uh, his view of the world, but what he came up with, you know, his talk was uh, zero to 60 uh, in 19 years. And it, uh, it's just a, it's a talk about, or how to go from zero to 60 in only 19 years. And it's how his, his a path to accelerated learning or accelerated learning on the path to agile and just talking about chaos within the randomness and how we try to find patterns where they may not be and all of our biases and things that go into us either learning or, or blocking us from agility. And it was really just a fascinating walk through human psychology, uh, the way people work, complex systems. Uh, he's got another great talk that he's just knocking out of the park. And I uh, was really happy to, to be able to sit through that and see him just come up with another great a set of ideas that I hope more people see. It's really, it's a great, just a great talk about how we can try to be just a little bit better uh, with his 
his excellent view of the world. So that one was a lot of fun. Um, and the, of course, the stalwart sessions, which I think are, are a lot of fun to go to. Got to see uh, Ron Jeffries and Chet Hendrickson uh, take questions and, and had the, uh, certainly the, the honor and privilege of, of posing a few questions to them about Scrum and got some really fascinating answers back. So uh, just a great experience. And again, I think it's wonderful what they've put together. The, the tracks, uh, there's a lot of tracks, there's a lot of options. And so regardless of your interest for on any particular day, there's something there for you. Uh, there's always, they're always innovating either with audacious salons or the stalwart sessions. Uh, and even the, the mix of new and seasoned speakers and I mean, just a really, really fun week. I don't know about all of you, but I've actually find that, uh, even some of the lunch tracks and that the hallway track were especially excellent this year too. Always one of my favorites, the hallway track. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I love the placement of the open jam this year because it was in a high traffic area. And I think they could, we just, I think we just had a lot more, uh, you know, stop and chat unexpectedly kind of conversations that way. Agreed. There were a lot of, a lot of things where conversations would maybe start in a session and then they'd continue in the hallway or at lunch. And, um, I saw a lot of people connecting with other people, um, <clears throat> in the hallways and that, that made me happy. I, would, I, I know I've been around the scene a long time when I, I see someone that I know walking over and introducing someone else that I know to a third person that I know. And, <laughs> and in my head, I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's a great connection to make. <laughs> hey, everybody. Ryan Ripley here. We're going to take a quick second here to get a great message from TechWell and their upcoming Agile Dev East conference. When we come back, more with Amitai, Faye, and Marcus about Agile 2017 and a few other fun topics. Looking for a conference that gives you customized learning options to explore Agile and beyond? Attend Agile Dev East, the premier Agile event taking place November 5th through the 10th in Orlando, Florida, covering the latest techniques and topics no matter your level of adoption. Immerse yourself in hot topics such as Agile and Lean Development principles and practices, scaled Agile development, Agile teams and leadership, digital transformation, and more. As an added bonus, the event is co-located with Better Software and DevOps East conferences, your one registration automatically gives you access to all three programs. This means you can choose from over 100 learning and networking opportunities to build a customized week of learning that fits you and your organization's specific needs. Be inspired by veteran keynote speakers, in-depth tutorials, topically driven concurrent sessions, networking events, and more to develop skills, supercharge knowledge, and re-energize your career growth. Explore the program at well.tc forward slash agile. Agile for Humans listeners use the code AgileDev to receive up to $200 off any registration package over $800. Visit well.tc forward slash agile, use the code AgileDev, and I hope to see you there. So Amitai, from your perspective, so I think you had to watch a lot of this uh, from, from Twitter as, uh, as you visit family across the pond. You know, what were some of the things that you took in uh, watching from afar? Uh, well, the the biggest thing is I've never actually been to the Big Agile Conference, and I, I thought maybe this would be the year, but then we found out that's when the baby was coming. So uh, I guess I'm pretty accustomed at this point to following it on Twitter and not otherwise. But uh, something that really caught my eye and that caught my ear again just now uh, when Faye was talking about the appreciation sessions, uh, I can just imagine how satisfying that would have been to be in, and I appreciate whoever put that together and whoever went and offered their appreciation because that's the kind of conversation I think we don't have enough of. Uh, and I'd like to offer a little bit now. I appreciate you, Ryan, for providing this venue uh, and other related venues like the, the meetup in Chicago, the, the conference, I guess you'd call it a summit yeah. uh, that I probably won't be able to make it to uh, and related discussion forums around this group. And the platform for people who are interested in Agile and want to bounce ideas around to have a way to do it. So thank you for that. I'm very appreciative. Especially now that I'm not, you know, I'm not working intentionally. I'm very happy about that. Uh, at some point that'll change, but I'm really enjoying the time with my family. And I'm not trying to travel except for when <laughs> it's to go to family. 
And so the opportunity to have these conversations in a professional mode is sort of a respite from wiping a baby's butt on one hand, <laughs> and also uh, some way to keep my foot, you know, in in the water for this world that I care so much about. So I appreciate you, Ryan, for providing this for me. Thank well, you. I thank you. I, I certainly appreciate you saying that. And uh, this is fun to do, and I, and it's uh, getting to connect with all of you that makes this fun for me. So I appreciate. Uh, each and every person who's willing to come on the show and share their truth and uh, and their story. And, you know, Amitai, you've been a, a great co-pilot and, and friend through this whole thing. So uh, the the appreciation is always mutual. And, uh, yeah, I just, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Thanks. Surprise. <laughs> uh, I really do hope that I can make it out to the Big Agile Conference next year. Uh, I really did hope that this year, like I said. But uh, it seems odd for someone who cares about these ideas as much as I do to never have taken part in that. It's just that, you know, I came kind of late to this party. I'm still trying to figure out where all the, where all the fun rooms are and <laughs> it just hasn't worked out. And, you know, part of it, we, we've probably talked about this before. I'm sure we have that. Uh, and in fact, a little earlier on this show that the big agile conference maybe self selects away from people who have their feet on the ground delivering and know the details of how that works, which may be why the Agile Alliance has this second conference that they've been doing, the tech conference, which is separate and selects for different kinds of people. And I've been to that both times very happily. So maybe that says more about me than it does about anything else, that I will you know, I'll move things aside to make sure that I get to the tech conference. And it's a little harder for me to justify to myself the cost, the size. I'm an introvert. It sounds incredibly overwhelming. <laughs> And then not necessarily to get a ton of hands-on technical learning from doing it. It's a tougher equation for me. But it, when I can follow it on Twitter the way that you guys have so carefully uh, documented what you're doing as you're doing it, it makes me think that it could be worth it. It probably is worth it. The next year, we'll see. You know, that I, I hope you make it out there, but I will not be at the next one. I, I I have a family obligation that's been scheduled during that week. So if you, the, your first one will be probably the first one in a few years I've missed. So I think this is this is the grand opportunity. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, you've got one year to figure out how to how to make a Ryan Ripley disguise for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just so Ryan can can still go to the Big Agile Conference in 2018. No, it's um, okay. it's interesting how. There is that split between the tech and the more the individuals and interactions side of, of the conferences. And, and I'm not sure what led to that. Um, I see it in, in some other conferences that I speak at and uh, where, where the tech track is not as popular uh, for, for some reason or another. So I think it was actually good that they pulled that apart uh, and they've got a concentrated group of, of uh, engineers and developers and testers who go to the more technical conference, but at the same time, you would hope that at some point they would converge, that we would get the, because it's almost like, you know, for some reason, I, I always think back to Scrum, and uh, this will get me laughed at in some circles, but, you know, the first book that, that uh, Ken Schwaber published with Mike Beadle, uh, XP was included. And so Scrum and XP were together. And then as things went on, you know, those two ideas, it's not that, Scrum excludes XP, but it's silent on it in, in future books and in, in, the, in the actual Scrum guide. But it, it's interesting how they start together and these things diverge. And I just, I, I wonder if that's a trend or if I'm just trying to make a trend or if my bias is trying to confirm some thinking that I have. But uh, it's just interesting how these things tend to separate. But uh, perhaps the next big thing is finding a way to bring those things back together. Yeah, I, I would say... This year, I I don't know if there were fewer deep technical tracks or sessions than before. I think they were there. I none of them grabbed my attention, so I didn't attend very many of them this year. Yeah, um, po popped into uh, one of the mob programming ones, but um, in in past years, I've I've generally found that despite all the the conventional wisdom and word on the street, almost every slot there would be two and sometimes three different technical sessions that um, some, that I'd have to choose. And so I could, I could get a nice dose of tech during that week um, in amongst all of the, the uh, individuals and interactions bits. Um, I, I'd, 
I would guess that there's probably less partly because now there's a separate tech conference right. that Amitai mentioned. Um, and it's, it's worth thinking back the, the origin of the big agile conference. The first one was agile 2005. And that was the convergence of two, what used to be two separate conferences. I don't remember the exact names, but one of them was an XP conference and the other was an agile conference. Okay. And they like one was something universe and the other one, it was like maybe XP year number and then agile universe or XP universe and agile year number. I forget, but they, um, in 2005, they, they combined them in Denver and they've been combined ever since. And I think the, the, the focus has been more and more on the coachy scrum mastery product ownery things, um, over time. Um, and I, I think part of that too, is that there's a, as the agile movement has gone mainstream, there are <clears throat> certified Scrum Master classes and certified Scrum Product Owner classes, and there is there are a whole bunch of people whose job description, project manager, um, whoever, um, <clears throat> maybe product manager, depending on the company, who don't really have a place in the nomenclature of of the popular Agile practices. I mean, notably Scrum. And so you've got all these people that were project managers that then move into like a PO or an SM type of a slot in the Agile world. So now they've got a natural in to start going to these conferences that they can learn this new role, whereas the engineers are still engineers or they're still engineers or developers. And um, I think this this massive body of, of the um, formerly project managers, now scrum masters and product owners, um, combined with engineers not really having a mapping that they don't they don't necessarily re realize their roles any different um has has sort of made for this sense that that agile is more of a more of a process and people thing than it is a technical thing whereas really it, and to add to that properly uh, it's the, the people that's, i'm sorry the, the people that spend the money on the tickets for may not be the engineers who with the budgets are more likely to be the people who are the future scrum masters or product owners and they may not yet understand until after they've gone to enough Agile conferences how much work is involved on the part of the developers to adjust to this new reality because they maybe didn't understand the work that well to begin with. So the people really who would make the choice whether to send a developer or not may not see the need because they don't see much about it at all. Well, there's that. And then there's a, you're not only paying for the developer to be there, then that's time you're paying them not to be at work. And that's a sensitive topic. Whereas mm -hmm. if the Scrum Master isn't at work, that doesn't cost much. <laughs> so anything else about Agile 17 that stood out that uh, that we want to cover? Or I'd, I'd love to hear um, Ryan and Faye, who were also there, what, uh, what was your favorite keynote? So, there are three keynotes at the Agile Conference, the opener, the closer, and then kind of the midweek one on Wednesday. And I, I, I loved them all. Yeah, so I actually... Um, I flew out Friday, so I regrettably, I missed the closing keynote, which I was able to follow on the plane a little bit, and it looked amazing on uh, on Twitter. Just the, it seemed like it was really an antidote to imposter syndrome. Um, just such a wonderful, empowering talk that uh, I really wish I'd actually scheduled a little different. The reason I actually scheduled a little different, though, is that I attended the Women in Agile event on Sunday. And so shifted my plan so I could get back home at a, at a reasonable, after a reasonable amount of time, but, uh, really missed, uh, really regret missing that keynote. I'd have to say, you know, David Marquette's opening keynote was just excellent. The way that he expressed intent over commands was, was just fascinating, showing the difference between red and blue work, uh, his use of audience interaction, just uh, a good mix of humor and just legitimate uh, skill and knowledge. You know, this is a person who, a uh, commander uh, of a submarine, uh, of a nuclear submarine, um, and turned around one of the lowest the performing uh, sub teams into one of the top performing by basically deciding to never give an order again. And I thought that was just such a fascinating way to approach it. So if it can work on a nuclear submarine, it can probably work in our organizations. But I thought his opening keynote was was just phenomenal. Yeah, I would second that. Yeah, it certainly takes all the wind out of the argument that, you know, our people need to be told what to do, right? If it can be accomplished inside the 
the U.S. military, then it might work in your office space as well. <laughs> and, and yeah, and I absolutely want to second the um, your comments on Denise Jacobs. I was there. She was amazing. Um, she was incredibly real and relatable and gave very concrete tips for overcoming that inner critic that everyone has. Um, and, and just for really talking yourself through that so that it no longer impedes you. Yeah, she was, she was amazing. And it, she, um, she was everything I love in a keynote as well, because she, clearly she had participated in the conference throughout the week and, um, had learned herself. So that was, that was really refreshing to see. I, I like to see that in, um, conference keynotes so that they're interested in what their peers have to say and what they can learn from it as well. Yeah, she, she, um, I think I even tweeted about this at the time, a bunch of her presentation slides featured pictures that she had taken during the conference. And she, right. that in the closing keynote, she, she really incorporated her week's learning and experience into the talk. And that probably helped the audience really connect with it too. Yeah, and it's interesting to think of somebody who, you know, is in her position. She's giving keynotes all the time and she's still she's still battling the same voices and she's just developed a nice toolkit of um tools to help herself through it and she's thankfully willing to share that with the rest of us. Agreed. Yeah, the other keynote that I really enjoyed uh, there's actually a couple during the Women in Agile session. And so this was a this is the second year they've done uh, the Women in Agile event uh, before the, the big comp starts. So it was on Sunday. So Natalie Warnert, um, Eric Willicke, uh, Jenny Tarwater, a, a few others on the organizational team put together just a, a wonderful event about um, empowering women in, in tech uh, from an Agile perspective. So astronaut Abby... Uh, is an aspiring astronaut. She's a, 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 a millennial who's now 20, but since I believe the age of you know eight or nine, she's wanted to be uh, an astronaut. She's now an intern, I think, at Kennedy Space Station. But uh, Astronaut Abby and her actual name, um, her name is Abigail Harrison, and just gave a keynote about how at, at uh, I believe, the age of 19, started a nonprofit organization called the Mars Generation, uh, that supports uh, just kids learning uh, STEM. Uh, and it's just incredibly impressive. You know, she's uh, 20 years old now, attending uh, Wesley College, uh, has a nonprofit aimed at empowering women and children uh, and everyone around STEM education. Um, she studies astrobiology and Russian, uh, you know, wants to go right into a PhD program, still determined to become an astronaut. You know, just such a, a motivated and powerful young woman uh, and just gave a, a wonderful keynote. Following that, I had the honor to be a, a mentor to a lightning keynoter. So Susan was a, a, a new speaker, and so she was offered the opportunity to, to do a seven-minute lightning keynote. And so I worked with her over the past month or so, and, uh, and she just did an amazing job. So I owe, and I think I've talked about this on the podcast before, my speaking career to Diane Zajac. So she sat down with me, showed me the ropes, helped me structure a talk, uh, and got me going, made some connections, and, and, and sent me on my way. And it's turned into uh, co-keynoting with Faye in South Africa this next week. And so it's just been a, a huge empowering thing for me. And uh, so it was really a, just a, a thrill to be able to, to pay that forward to, to Susan she did an outstanding job. I think we're going to see her and, and many of the others who did the, the lightning keynotes at many other conferences. Just a really great event. Did it, you know, a great message from, uh, from, Abigail, ha <clears throat> from Abigail Harrison. Um, great sessions and workshops. There's basically an open space around empowering people uh, in agile and tech. Uh, learning how to become a better partner to uh, diversity and inclusion. And, and really just, uh, just a really eye-opening and powerful event. So it, you know, thanks to the Agile Alliance and Natalie Warner, especially for for making that happen and for the opportunity to to not only see Abigail uh, Harrison give her her keynote, but to to be a mentor to to Susan and to help her get uh, her speaking career started too. Can I add yeah. a shout out for the for the men who were um, able to come and participate in that? And I know it doesn't fit with everybody's schedule, but it 
for first of all, uh, I understand there were a lot of men who didn't understand that the Women in Agile conference was open to everyone. And so now you know it is open to everyone and everyone is welcome and encouraged to attend. Um, and I just really appreciate the support that we got from everyone there. And uh, to call out someone specifically, I want to thank um, Declan Whelan for convening a session about how allies can help people who are in any kind of marginalized group, really, uh, not just women, but um, any kind of group, how allies can help. What can they do differently in their day-to-day -day lives to show support, to lend support? And um, I think we got a lot of great ideas coming out of that. That's cool. I hadn't heard about that session. I, I did attend the Women in Agile last year, and uh, <clears throat> I was really sad to miss it this year. Um, I, I, would, I would recommend to um, women and men all over the the attendee space to uh, try to catch it next year. It's definitely worthwhile. I was impressed, honestly, that the there's probably 10 to 15% of the, of the audience was male. And, and I think everyone was just focused on, you know, that empowering uh, message that, that the organizers put forward. I know Chris Merman, a uh, good friend of the show was, he and I uh, spent a lot of time promoting and trying to get quite a few people to come on uh, to come to this event, uh, he did a great blog post that got retweeted by the Agile Alliance. Uh, we did a couple of podcast episodes with Natalie. I hope to. I hope that we continue to see this event grow. So year over year, they've increased attendance. They've increased not only overall attendance but male participation. You know, it's just a great opportunity to get everyone together to first of all bring awareness to some of the issues in the community, and then also to have everyone come together and work on you know positive solutions and ways to move forward. So. We'll continue to support that uh, that event, and we'll have Natalie back at some point to talk about, or to, to perhaps debrief on on her experience and what she thought. But uh, yeah, really cool event. So, you know, between the Women in Agile event, uh, the focus on the code of conduct, uh, and and a lot of these other things we've talked about, it's really you know the Agile Alliance has really stepped up. I think with the um, diversity, inclusion, and safety aspects to the conference that I just, you know, we, we just can't say enough good things about. Oh, we lost Amitai. I wonder if he's changing a diaper. He is. is he, he? Uh, he texted us. Yep. He said he, friends, I have been called to the land of the midnight diaper must drop. Got it. So we'll wish uh, Amitai <clears throat> farewell. You know what? At this point, I think we may have hit our time box. Just one more appreciation for the open community that we work in and how I learn so much from everyone all the time. I'm just so appreciative of that. And I don't even, I, I cannot even fully appreciate everything that I've learned so far. So thank you to everyone. Yeah, that is, uh, it's just fun. It's a fun week. And so if you've never been to the big conf, uh, agile 2018 is in San Diego. If you can start planning ahead, the dates are posted. We'll get a link in the show notes. It's a great opportunity to learn from a lot of people. And what's fun is you can sit down at a table with a group of strangers and suddenly you're talking about things and they're sharing their techniques and suddenly you've learned so much and it, it was just lunch. And then you've got more right. sessions yeah. to go to. And if you get a chance to meet some of the great people there like Marcus and Faye, uh, who are just very giving with their time. And then you run into George Dinwiddie and Tim Ottinger and Esther Derby, uh, Ron Jeffries, they're all sitting in the hallway open to conversation. And so you have access to, you know, we read all of their books Right. So these are the people that have put out the books that we've all come up on and they're sitting out in the hallway happy to talk. You know, it's just that that great giving open kind of uh, kind of vibe that the community has. It's just really fun to see. And so if you yeah. if you've never been highly recommend it, and hopefully we'll we'll see many of the Agile for Humans listeners at future conferences. In addition to agreeing with that, a couple tips for first time attendees or people thinking about it. It can be overwhelming, as as Amitai mentioned. Um, it is a lot of people and it's a lot of stuff going on. Um, one thing that can, can really help is if you manage to get there early and attend something that happens just before it, such as the women in agile session, or, um, there was some talk of doing, uh, like an agile coach camp or a technical coach camp or something before. I know a couple of years ago, coach camp happened the weekend right before the big agile conference and, Anecdotally, people who go to an event right beforehand um, really gain something where they can leverage the, all the social connections because they, they get to know a small set of people 
over that weekend. And then they, they have a built in sort of crowd that they can, they can mingle with and then extend out from during the big event. So yes, highly recommend it. Highly recommend catching something beforehand if you can. Yeah. And agreed on the, on, um, Amitai's point about it, it can possibly be overwhelming. That's for sure. Um, but there's, definitely ways of managing that and i'm i'm laughing because so many people who attend who i know would classify themselves as introverted or you know just needing um an energy boost and everyone's sympathetic to that um so there are ways to manage that there's always people who are looking for you know small conversations or just quiet time everyone there gets that so i wouldn't shy away from it simply because it's so large you know, the best tip I ever got on uh, on that front was um, stopping and doing a nap somewhere around Tuesday or Wednesday, just taking a couple hours and and just relaxing because there is just so much going on. But, you know, everyone's different and there's a ton of people there to help. The first day, the, the new attendee session is invaluable. Um, so I think that's a that's a that's a great tip, too. But uh, yeah, just check it out. It's a great place to find. Uh, plenty of plenty of Agilus and plenty of people to learn from, and uh, can't recommend it enough. I think at this point, but we'll wrap it there. Uh, Marcus, floor is yours. Yes. What do you have going on? What would you like to promote? Uh, how can the listeners continue the conversation with you? A um, couple of ways, if they want to. I am my most active space <coughs> online is Twitter, and that is um, M Silpala or M-S-I-L-P-A-L-A. I recommend going to the show notes to get it because it's kind of a mouthful to spell over the air. Um, I also have a blog, which um, <clears throat> Ryan mentioned at the beginning. I started the blog. I've been meaning to for 10 years, and I finally started it while I was um, fighting cancer. Because, And I have Amitai to thank for this because he, he graciously offered to create a blog for me out of my Facebook posts so that non-Facebook people could, could see it too. And then I, of course, said, no, 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 I want to do it. So then I finally I did it. Um, <laughs> and that, that is at Marcus, M-A-R-K-U-S, dot Silpala, S-I-L-P-A-L-A, dot com. And uh, so far, it is very heavily weighted towards the cancer category because, as, as Ryan mentioned, that's, that's how I was getting the word out and updates on myself during the the dark months. Um, but I, I endeavor to, um, get more software category entries in there and, and tip the scales in that direction over the next year. Excellent. Looking forward to it, Marcus. Hey, how about you? How can people interact, uh, communicate and, uh, keep up with you? Um, I'm with Marcus. I spend probably most of my social interaction, social media interaction on Twitter. You can find me at agile Fay. Um, Faye spelled correctly is F-A-Y-E not any of those other inferior spellings that you might have heard <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you mentioned actually uh, the week of August 21st we will be at Agile Africa in Johannesburg and I am very much looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to all the new people we're going to meet and hearing about the Agile scene in South Africa um, after that uh, the end of September, I'll be at the Columbus IIBA Professional Development Day. So if you're in Central Ohio and going to be around there, please come introduce yourself. I love meeting new people. And then in November, I will be at Better Software East in Orlando. Um, so I, I know many of your listeners will be there. So um, again, please come up and say hi. That sounds great. And for those uh, not aware, Faye is a part of the COHA organization that puts on the Path to Agility conference that we talk about regularly. So she's uh, right front and center of, of that endeavor and is uh, very much responsible for the great conference that that has become. So Faye, we'll go ahead and plug that for you in the show, in the show notes as well, because uh, we'd love to see uh, a lot of people submit talks and attend uh, in Columbus next year, too. Likewise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's always the week before Memorial Day. Great. So as for me, your host, Ryan Ripley, as Faye mentioned, we're, while you're listening to this, it's very likely that we'll be in Johannesburg presenting and co, co-keynoting and, and really checking out the Agile scene there. So we'll be sure to come back and do an episode and report in on how that went. 
Uh, otherwise, just getting a lot of great emails about past shows that we're going to will address in, in upcoming episodes. Uh, a lot of great comments on Twitter. Just really appreciative to the the listening community. I think this is now a community of listeners. The uh, it's just overwhelming. We got a lot of great comments at Agile 2017 about the show. Uh, a lot of great comments coming in f- coming in from Twitter, the Facebook page, uh, email, and just want to say thank you. It is incredibly humbling to see the download numbers go up every month. Uh, you all out there are making Agile for Humans the top Agile podcast on iTunes, and I just cannot thank you enough for the support and, and how much you share uh, with with me and with others about the show and how it's impacting your lives and your career. So thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you for listening. That's all we have this week. Thank you as always for listening to the show and everyone out there, please have a great night. Thanks for listening to agile for humans. Let's keep the conversation going. Drop us a question on Twitter at agile for humans or visit agile for humans.com. <laughs>